You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. As some of you know, I'm Twitter the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of A Masquerade in the Woods. So, y'all, without further ado, let's jump right into this damn horror show, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> I let go of the handle and stand back up. On the other side of the door stands Lucas, avoiding my gaze. Paws clasped together in front of him. He's blushing again. Uh, thanks. He says quietly, scooting past me and closing the door behind him. I have no idea how long he'll take, so I decide to just wait in his bedroom. This is just down the hall from the bathroom. Other than a lamp in the window, the room's dark. The mask is still there, sitting idly on his desk. It looks pretty ominous in the dark. Creepy might be a better word to describe it. I wonder what's up with the design? It reminds me of the first time I saw it, when he slowly opened that door and blinded me with the flashlight. A cold feeling surges through my chest. River told him to put it away, right? With nothing better to do while I wait, I suppose I might as well do it for him. I pick it up and walk over to the wardrobe. Inside hangs the raincoat he wore when he found me, along with an assortment of t-shirts and hoodies. On the floor, leaning against the wall, stands the rifle. I wonder if he had intended to use it on George. George. That was your name. Did you have a family, George? Someone who cared about you? You were an awful person, but did you really deserve this? No trial? No jury? Just execution. Would Lucas kill? D does he have it in him? I did. Until yesterday, I, I didn't think I did. Maybe it depends more on the situation than the person. River said I did what was necessary to survive. But she also said not everyone would do the same in that situation. And now because of it, I'm probably wanted for murder, or, or at least involved in the investigation. Did one of us really have to die? I hear the bathroom door open again, accompanied by the tapping of Lucas's footsteps. I didn't hear the toilet flush. Actually, I didn't hear anything. Wait, how long was I standing here for? I decided to just put the mask on a pile of folded pants and close the wardrobe. Lucas steps into the view in the doorway, holding something in his left paw. His eyes fall on me, and his breath catches in his throat. Before I can see what, is it, what it is he's holding, he throws his arm behind his back. His ears stand straight up as he stares at me. For a moment, we just stand there looking at each other. What's that? I ask, lifting my paw to gesture at his arm. What's what? His answer comes out way too fast. Why is he acting so strange? While his behavior spikes my curiosity, I probably shouldn't pry. He looks uncomfortable enough as it is. Besides, I still really have to pee. Well, I'll go take that shower. He gives me a few quick nods. And I'm pretty sure I hear him gulp. Yeah, sh sure. Lucas takes a step back into the hallway, twirling on his heels uncomfortably, facing me the entire time as I turn the corner and walk towards the bathroom. I hope I didn't do something wrong. I strip out of my clothes and fold them neatly placing him on top of the cabinet. Looks like Lucas got a towel up for me already. Next, I start undoing the bandages on my wrist and paw, rolling them up and placing them on the sink. Removing the gauze reveals my injured fingers, and the cool air embracing them makes me shiver. They've stopped bleeding, but touching them still stings. Looking at the red divots makes me a little nauseous, so I decide to just continue unwrapping my head. I set it down on the sink and look up, coming face to face with my reflection in the mirror. Oh man. Is this really me? I lift my paw to confirm it, running it along my cheek. Ah, he's missing two claws, too. Jesus. It's the first time I've gotten a real look at myself. Outside the puddle in the forest. My whiskers twitch at the, t twitch at the tip of my finger as the tip of my fingers graze them. I open my mouth and run a digit along the newfound fangs. Not at all as intimidating as Lucas's, but much more so than my human teeth. I really am an animal. Sort of. No, I'm still human, I swear. One second, y'all. Is water time. Okay. Somewhere underneath the fur. Right? Does it make a difference? Lucas acts pretty human despite the dog exterior. Maybe I haven't changed as much as I thought. What did I do to end up like this? 
I sigh, shaking my head and turn around. Stepping into the shower, I turn it on, and immediately recoil from the ice-cold water spouting out the shower head. The right paw shoots forward to turn the nozzle, and soon enough the water turns a rather pleasant temperature. I step in under the water, under the shower head again, careful to keep my injured paw out of it. I immediately notice how much heavier I feel. I'm not used to having fur soaking up so much water. It feels good, though. Almost as good as full submersion. Comforting. I feel my muscles relax and release all the built-up tension. And soon I can finally let my body do its business. I really gotta figure out how to use this thing. Lord, creepy game. <laughs> have you, have you visited yet? Every day. What? Why haven't you told me? Come on, Tiny. We could have gone together. I don't know. I guess I just wanted to talk to him alone for a bit. Eric offered to come too, but I told him the same thing. I saw the flowers you left, though. How'd you know they were mine? Who else would get him the scorpion grasses? Chick in the flower store told me they'd fit. So said they're called Mio's something or some shit. Man, I don't know shit about flowers. Never had to buy them before. But they look fine, but had I known they're called scorpion grasses, I'd have gotten something else. Shit, shit sounds like some off, off shit sounds like some off strain of weed. I think they're I think they were fitting. They're beautiful. You should have seen the face of the cashier when I walked in asking for something to place at a grave. I guess you don't seem like the sentimental type. I bet your mom could have brought could have, could have brought scorpion grasses. Sounds stupid enough to be something she'd get. I doubt it. Why's that? If she didn't go to the funeral, why would she go leave flowers? She wants nothing to do with him. So the choice of flowers is inappropriate, too. Since when did you get green fingers? Green thumbs. Thumbs, whatever. I swear you're acting more like a... <laughs> I swear you're acting more like a fag every day. But Judy taught me some. You know, working with fresh herbs and all. Come on, scorpion grasses? Sounds pretty fitting for her. Not if you call them by with their other name. And what's that? Forget-me-nots. Oh. Shit, I gotta go. Aren't you gonna hit the showers? You go ahead. I'll, I'll be back soon, I promise. Where the fuck are you going? Hey, you little shit! Just stay there. I'll be back before you know it. I can't sleep. Lucas strongly insists that I take his bed while he sleeps on the couch. I've been laying here for 20 minutes now, alone in my th alone with my thoughts, only accompanied by a light groaning coming from the other room. While the walls aren't paper thin, you can still hear things pretty well through them. Maybe Lucas is having trouble sleeping too. I know Miles groans and turns a lot when he has nightmares. I glance over the digital clock on the bedside table. 3.14. As expected, cleaning fur, cleaning fur took a lot longer than skin, only further exasperate, exacerbated by only using being able to use one paw to do so. Not only that, but getting myself dry afterwards was a nightmare on its own. Funny how much the choice of shampoo impacts one's scent, because now I smell like cinnamon, too. I sit up in bed and rub my eyes, grunting. It's late. I should be tired. But I'm wide awake. Too many thoughts racing through my head. One second, y'all. Water time. Laying in this strange new bed just makes me miss my own. Makes me miss Miles and Eric. Gotta get back home, but how? I don't have any money. I don't even have an ID or phone. Lucas offered to pay for the trip, but I don't even know where. I don't even know where to. Miles must be so upset. What if I can't get back? Will I ever get to see you again? Are you out there looking for me? What if you forget about me? I'm still here, still breathing. I'll be back soon. I promise. Just stay there, and I'll be back before you know it. Are you thinking about me, Miles? I'm thinking about you. Don't forget me. I have to stop them. Something terrible is going to happen. But again, they speed up. And they lose control. And we hit the railing. And it gives out. And we fall. I'll see you on the other side. Yes, you will, honey.
If it's so dangerous, what were you doing in the forest? Was well, down at the old abandoned factory. Oh. Was well, down at the old abandoned factory, taking care of some business, just making my way back when I stumbled across a helpless little pup lost in the woods. What's at the factory? This, uh, big machine the boss had us install. It's pretty unwieldy unwiel to carry, even with three guys. Lucas had again woken, woken up before me and started breakfast. He can still call it breakfast past midday. Following River's advice, he fried up some bacon and made oatmeal. It was nice while he... It was while eating that it was while eating that River had texted him, had texted him asking us to swing by her work for my che for my checkup, instead of her swinging by the apartment. She was gonna, she was going to be working late tonight at the hospital and had booked an appointment under Lucas's name to keep me off the record. I was a bit skeptical about leaving the apartment after what River had said last night, but Lucas assured me we'd go unseen so long as we stuck to the smaller roads and didn't attract unnecessary attention. Maybe I'm overreacting about all this. I mean, the only ones who would be able to put two and two together would be the police officers investigating the scene to begin with. Dig my paw down my pocket a bit deeper. Blackmail seems to be a pretty small town, but big enough to bolster its own hospital and sizable brewery that we just passed. <sighs> Sorry, y'all. It's rather late. Gonna be sleeping soon. Lucas's apartment sits near the outskirts of town in the suburbs, similar to how I live. Back home. We've been driving for about ten minutes in silence for the most part, but I decided to try to break it by asking Lucas some questions. So, you're a carpenter by day? Only part-time, but I get by. Lucas smiles, but keeps his eyes on the road. The fact he only works part-time makes me want to prioritize getting home even more. I don't want to mooch off him, because I can't imagine rent being cheap. Here I go again, talking about animals as if they're human. Ah, uh, I mean... Uh, while being driven in a car by a dog to a hospital most likely filled with even more animals acting like humans. Shake my head to get shake my head to rid myself of the thought. None of this makes sense. What were we talking about? Oh, right, carpenter by day. And by night you're Looks like an eel, water time. Okay. I let the question hang in the air as Lucas' smile slowly fades, replaced by that familiar anxious look. He shifts his paw on the steering wheel and clears his throat. I do some reconnaissance, I guess you could say. Do you work with the police? No, it, it's more of a hobby. Hobbies usually don't include guns and masks. Lucas bites his lip as he takes a left to, uh, as he takes a left towards the tall building tall building looming in the distance. Are you some sort of vigilante? Lucas stays silent for a moment before answering. Like River said, I'm just a maniac running around playing dress-up at night. So, an aspiring vigilante? He lifts his free paw to scratch his neck. Clearly a bit uncomfortable with the topic. Vigilante sounds like a pretty cool hobby, honestly. Vigilante implies I've actually done some good. <sighs> well, you saved me. That counts for something, right? Lucas turns into the parking lot in front of the hospital and turns the car off. A small smile forming on his muzzle. Thanks for that, by the way. Thanks for that, by the way. I don't think I got the chance to say that yet. His eyes seem to light up as they meet mine. Oh, uh, you're... you're welcome. We sit in silence for a moment, just looking out the windshield. Should we... get going? I look back at Lucas, sitting silently with his paws on the steering wheel, his seatbelt still on. I hear him swallow as he reaches down to unbuckle himself. His left paw reaches up to adjust the rearview mirror, looking himself over running a few digits through this tuft of fur atop his head. Hey! He looks over, and I smile in an attempt to comfort him somewhat. We'll be okay. Just a quick checkup. Then we'll be out of here. Zero chance of anyone recognizing us, right? At least I hope so. Lucas sighs and nods. Better keep your paw hidden, though, just in case someone takes notice. Leaving the car and walking up to the entrance, it's difficult to tell who's more nervous. The sterile smell of rubbing alcohol and cleaning products fills my nose as we make our way inside the reception. As per Lucas's suggestion, I keep my paws stuffed in the front of the pocket of my hoodie. My two bandaged fingers might not look like much, but it's better not to take any chances. Hopefully the bandage covering my head won't stand out too much in the hospital setting. I'll go check in real quick. He reluctantly walks ahead over to the rhino sitting behind the desk. There's a few people in line already, so I decide to take a seat in one of the vacant chairs along the wall. An assortment of different people line the seats to my left. None of them human. A salamander, a lion, a bull, a canine. I still can't wrap my head around how I ended up in a place like this. 
Uh, Cheetah, a few chairs down, notices me staring, so I avert my gaze towards the hallway leading out of the room instead. A few people wearing nurse outfits and surgical masks pass by, entering and exiting different rooms lining the, lining the corridor. Some are carrying clipboards, others rolling carts piled with bedsheets and pillows. One, however, stands out. Oh, shit, he's cool. A tall, slim, ice-white figure, wearing a black suit and sporting a dark ponytail, steps out through one of the doors further down the hall. At first I mistake him for a stallion, but the long spike on his forehead makes me reconsider. Behind him, a much shorter, younger-looking cat wearing pajamas steps out, holding his hand. The unicorn's soft, brown eyes meet mine, and a gentle smile forms on his lips. He lifts a hand to wave at me just as a group of people dressed in white rush past him into the room they just left, shouting something I can't quite catch. Oh, shit! That's death! Holy shit, I just understood that. That's death! And he's take. Oh, God, he took that kid with him. And the hospital staff rushing in are trying to stabilize the kid, I guess. Oh, holy shit, that's... Oh, that's dark. Oh, seems like a good place to pause it. All right, yeah, I'm going to pause it right there. Holy shit, that's dark. Yeah, oh, man. So, okay, so basically our main character can see death? And death is a white unicorn wearing a black suit. Sure, why not? It's a furry visual novel. We may as well go that route. Alright, anyway, y'all, thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye!